Special thanks to the video smorgasbord for providing us with today's MSM draw. Submit a drawing prompt with the hashtag MSM draw on this video for a chance for it to be drawn in the next one. Do you know what time it is? It's Astropod time! My favorite is Wubblin is the star of today's monster biology. Oh boy, my favorite Wubblin. All right, we're gonna have a field day with this one. <laughs> now, as we start, I'd like to address some new developments regarding the anatomy of the Wubblins. The monster handlers confirm that the Wubblins are machine-like, a combination of organic tissue and artificial parts because they were created by the Wubox. As explained in an earlier video, I theorized the Wubblins to have been sculpted and baked into the hard statues of their dormant form. The clay, I posited, was a form of electrically supercharged species of amoeba-like mold, which is dried out until it is reawakened with energy. Thus, the Wubblins, creatures of living mold, metal wiring, and various other bits of material the Wubox built into their design, match the description of half-organic, half-machine-like monsters. Since that initial theory was released, we have learned a few things. First, we now know the Wublins are made from a material called bubblerite. This material is found in massive deposits all around the monster world and is found in many path decorations. Secondly, we now know that bubblerite was used by the Colossals to create the first few monsters, including Monculus and even the ancestors of the Ethereals. The biggest change to our current theory is that, if we still look at this through a scientific lens and not the arcane magic of ancient colossal music spirits, uh, the bubblerite functions the same way as the proposed Electrovivus Ludus. Perhaps bubblerite is just large subterranean pockets of a dormant microorganism, which is terrifying. So really the only thing that changed is the name from Wublin Mold or Electrus Vivus Ludus or whatever you want to call it to bubblerite. Now we can get into the fun stuff. You'd think that all the Wublins would look the same inside, but their body plans are so different, there will pretty much always be something different about them. Yes, they are all made from the same living bubblerite, but the different ways the monsters produce sound also impacts their internal design. For instance, the homogenous insides of the Dwumral would look different from the insides of the Fleetworm, because the latter monster has a snaking internal network of spiracles and windpipes that allow it to produce sound. Okay, so now we can talk about Astropod. I think it's my favorite Wubblin because it's just so squishy. But you should be careful around the Astropod's antlers. They look like they could deliver a nasty shock. There's reason to believe that these protrusions were inspired by the rhinophores of real nudibranchs, which is what the Astropod was inspired by. However, the game specifically states them as antlers, so that's as much as we know about them. Perhaps the Wubox just included them as a decorative feature. At any rate, the antlers of the Wublin creates an electric arc, which is the source of the monster's sound. Tangent time. Can the Astropod electrocute you? <laughs> we can use the power of science to find out. First, we need to calculate the accurate size of the Astropod. Using the confirmed Wobox height of 13 feet, we can compare it to the size of the Astropod and find it stands around 7.5 feet tall. <laughs> With this, we can measure the length between the antler electrodes. According to Passion's Law, which calculates the voltage required to initiate an electrical arc, the astropod, in an environment of standard pressure and temperature, generates an arc between its antlers that measures in at roughly two and a half million volts. <laughs> Assuming the astropod also has significant amperage, this Wublin can deliver 1,000 times the lethal amount. How shocking. Now, where were we? Uh, oh yes, the design of the antlers. In order to produce an electrical arc of such magnitude, the astropod would most likely have electrodes on either end of its antlers. This is most easily explained by the idea that the internal structural wireframe supports the antlers and conducts electricity. By positioning them close to the surface of the skin, the electricity can jump between the electrodes and form the arc. 
This segues into a discussion of the structural wireframe of the Wobblins. It's confirmed that the electricity in the environment of Wobblin Island provides the spark of life to the Wobblins. What if the internal wires not only acted as support, but also as a circulatory system as well? In order to distribute the life-giving electricity through the interior of the Wobblin, the wireframe conducts the electricity like power lines through the bubblerite. Instead of blood vessels and bones, these metal wires combine the purpose of both by providing structure to the clay-like flesh and delivering electricity to each area of the monster. There are a variety of metals these wires could be fashioned from, including copper, aluminum, and tungsten. This last metal speculation could hold water due to the Thwox head tuners being made of the stuff, perhaps hinting at the underlying structure. In my illustration, however, I have drawn them fashioned from silver, which is one of the most efficient conductors of electricity, and also is very flexible, making it suitable to be used inside of the bodies of living creatures. Now I watch a lot of craft and clay sculpting videos. I love it when the artists integrate LED lights into their work to make a specific part of the sculpture glow. Wouldn't you know it, but parts of the astropod exhibit this same feature as well. The purple spots of the astropod light up, hinting at the fact that the Wubbox may have installed lights under the skin of the Wubblin. They connect to the wire skeleton and light up whenever the wireframe surges with power during the astropod's song. In a similar sense, the back tufts of the astropod shift color as well. While normally these are the gills of the nudibranch, the astropod is a living bubblerite creature made of microorganisms and has no need to breathe. We can look at an official astropod fact, that its shed shell tufts make great mood rings to figure out how they work. They're not powered by LEDs, as they continue to change color after being shed. Instead, it seems that the tufts of this wobblin can undergo chromism, which means that they can change color and light up if charged with electricity, exactly what we see them doing. Additionally, the tufts act as mood indicators. They change color based upon how you feel. This checks out with the electrical aspect of the tufts because they would be able to pick up on the electrical output of your body and shift hues accordingly. An interesting tidbit of information is that the underside of the astropod's foot resembles a star. This makes sense because astropod is literally Latin for starfoot. I've drawn an illustration in a detail bubble. It was at this moment that I started painting the astropod, but in my infinite wisdom, I didn't realize that it wasn't recording. So enjoy missing like three hours worth of painting. Our final talking point regards the communication difficulties of the astropod. The bio states that the slightest movement of its puny upper arms communicates nuanced subtext and exposes veiled thoughts. If we were to look at the playing animation of the astropod, we would notice that the wobblin wiggles its upper limbs only when it's playing which is at the same time its antlers discharge and its tufts light up. These two tiny limbs could be the source of an electrical fault, or perhaps the intended way the astropod is supposed to generate its sound. It appears that when the arms are moved, an electrical connection is made somewhere in the body that allows the energy to flow through it. Perhaps these arms act as a generator, and that by moving them, the monster produces the electricity that supercharges its wire skeleton. Of course, the movement of the arms reveals what the astropod is thinking. It's most likely that its arc of electricity is how it communicates with other monsters, and its shell tufts portrays how it feels. Thus, moving its arms at an unwanted time broadcasts its thoughts and current mood to all the residents of Wublin Island. Although, this does raise a question. Could the astropod electrocute you by saying the word cheeseburger? At any rate, we are done with the astropod, so let's roll the completion footage. This was a great episode. I absolutely love the Astropod. What do you think about this, Wublin? Let me know in the comments. By the way, hidden in this video is a hint regarding what my next video is. Good luck trying to find it. 
If you like monster biology and wish to learn more from this type of video, like and subscribe so I can reach more people. You've been watching Cryptanium, and I'll see you all later.